Hey, what's up? It's Elsalomon13. I'm back with another Minecraft video. I know I haven't made a video in a really long time, but I made something pretty cool that I want to show you guys. So this is a fully functional version of Nazi Zombies from Call of Duty that took me about a couple weeks to do. And I completely recreated the map, knocked her on Toten. I'm not done with it. I haven't done the second floor yet. Um, but it works completely in vanilla. All you have to do is is have the command blocks enabled. So you don't have to have any mods or anything for this, and it works works pretty well so far so uh the way you replicate rebuilding barriers like you do in call of duty is you put down doors and since the zombies can break down the doors it's essentially the same thing and you have a bow and 64 arrows so i'm gonna you can get more weapons because i put in the mystery box uh which also works pretty well so to get to that there is a kill counter using the command blocks and once you get a certain amount of kills then it's going to let you into the mystery box room and then you can get weapons with there i haven't put it where you can get points for the mystery box yet, where you have to like pay for the weapons. I'm working on that, but so far it's going pretty well. And it's best to play on tiny render distance. So I'm going to do a quick example here, and here we go. So here's Nocturne Toten, the first floor obviously. It looks alright, but there are the zombies. Oh, hold on, I gotta set myself to survival. Because I wasn't creative. There you can see they try to break down the doors. And this one might be able to get our Yeah, he broke down the down. And since I spawn in the doors, you're able to stack 64 of them. Oh, crap. Oh, man. I need to lower the difficulty on this or something. Oh, man. Oh, no. Let me barricade it. Oh man, there's a bunch. Alright, now once I kill this guy, once I have six kills, that's going to trigger a command block. It's using the test for command that they added. And once that happens, it's going to drop two levers in that I can use to access the mystery box room. Because this is in survival. Right now I am... What? Oh, there's another? Where? 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 Oh, there you go. There we go. That should be all of them. Once I do that, it triggers that, and then they're going to drop in through here. Here you can see the two levers, and once they get to the bottom, they're going to... Any second now, they're going to hit that pressure plate, and it's going to notify me in case I'm still in combat. It'll make a sound. Like that. And so then it notifies me. You can grab these two levers and put them on here. Now, I wanted to do this in adventure mode so you couldn't put blocks, but then you wouldn't be able to rebuild barriers. So what I did is you're in survival, but you have an infinite mining fatigue, so you can't break any blocks. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing. You can still place them. And so here's the second room. I'm not completely finished. I, well, I, I don't know. I might be. I just need to finish the second floor mainly. Here's that cave they come out of. Second floor is incomplete. And then here's the mystery box. This was a labor of a lot of work. I don't know. It's It works pretty well. There's no points yet, but when you grab it, it's going to give you a random item. See, there I got a diamond sword. And then I let go. And I do it again. And it gives... Oh, wow. Another diamond sword. And again. Oh, an apple. So it's going to give you a random item pretty much every time. I don't know why it's giving you duplicates. Wow, this is kind of biased. There are iron, iron leggings. And it, it's pretty much random. The way it works is it has, um, it's connected to a dispenser. So every time you open it, it's a trap chest. It's going to send the signal. And dispensers work by sending a random item. And then once those have been used up, this hopper will provide it with some more random items. Most of these aren't stackable, though, so I can't really put these back in. But that's how the mystery box works. Here you can see... I've kind of done a little bit of the second floor, but really not much. I gotta finish that. And this is how it works with the uh, with the levers, how it knows to drop them in. So it's gonna drop them in through there, and what this is, this is a test for command. So it's gonna test, it has a clock when you start it, when you uh, join in. It starts this clock, which keeps testing this block to see if they have a minimum number of six kills. So once you get to six kills, it's gonna trigger this comparator, which turns both these droppers and puts in uh puts in the levers so you can go to the next room. 
And so that's kind of kind of confusing, but it makes sense after a while. And you can see there's a lot of wiring. Uh, this is actually my second version. The first version was just on a timer. I didn't use the test for command. So once you started the game, after a certain period of time, out using a bunch of repeaters, eventually they just drop in. But now I'm using the test force so once you get six kills. And you can see the zombies are not naturally spawning. They're spawning through dispensers that I have linked underground um, back to the back to the command center. I have a command center on here which has everything. So here's the, here's the first commands. When you start the game, you, you press the button. And that triggers all of these command blocks. There's a bunch, but there's even more in the other spot. So it's going to give them 64 arrows. It's going to set them to survival, although it doesn't work for me. I don't know why that doesn't work. It's going to give them two bows and 64 doors. And then it's going to TP them to the spot in the middle. And it's going to make the sound of a mob wither spawn. That's how you get that creepy sound effect when the game starts. So I thought that's pretty cool. That's a new, it's a new command they added. And then it puts you on the team so you can count the score. So it adds kills. So that's why I have the kills over on the right, the total number of my kills. And it puts you on the red team, and it sets it on the side. It displays the kills. And then it's supposed to do it below name, but that doesn't really work. So if you have multiple players, it'll show their, how many kills they have below their name. I'm not sure if that works. And then this is it resets the score. So if you want to play again, when, you, when I hit this button, it's going to reset my kills. So I can go ahead and do that. Let me see. Break these lines so it only triggers one. So now I reset my kills, my kills, so I don't have any more. And then this last one is uh, turns off friendly fire. So if you have multiple people playing, then uh, you can't hurt each other. Let me cover this up. And this will work completely vanilla. There's no mods, so if as long as you have uh, command blocks enabled on your server, you can put this on your server and it should work fine. Now that's actually not the only command blocks you have to use. As you can see under here, it links it to the command center. And what the command center is, is a bunch of command blocks, as you can see. Now that's the main ones over here that start when you press the button, but this will also trigger the first round of the zombies. Now the point of the command center is, since I only have one round of the zombies actually programmed in that'll go automatically, the rest of the rounds have to be done by somebody manually right now. As you can see, this is the first room, so this will be where where you don't have access to the mystery box room yet. This will trigger all the dispensers for the first room, and this one triggers them all for the second room. And this triggers all the dispensers, so every, every dispenser on the map will fire one zombie. And so this has to be done manually by whoever is doing that until I program in, but it should be pretty easy to get the rounds to go automatically. All you have to do is have test four commands and count the number of kills. Once everybody gets to say 15 kills, you can have the second round start and then the next one, etc. Just link it up with redstone. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of, of dispensers, and most of these go automatically when you press the button to start the game. It's going to trigger this line, which turns most of these on. And, uh, and most of them are just checking to make sure the game will, will run correctly. Like, uh, like this will give the players mining fatigue for a billion, which makes it infinite, so you can't break any blocks. This will disable natural mob spawning, so they won't spawn naturally, only from dispensers. This puts it on hard, and when it's on hard, that means zombies can break the door. So that's a, ne that's a necessity. But of course, this can all be done manually if you want by just pressing these buttons. And this will clear all the inventories, like that, so uh, to double check once the game starts. Set all the players' spawn points. This will set their spawn points. This is best to be done manually. It'll set their spawn point inside uh, the starting building, which has all the uh, the instructions. This disables block drops, so if they do happen to break any blocks, they're not going to drop anything. Disable mob loot, so they won't drop XP or rotten flesh. The zombies won't. And disable mob griefing. So uh, this is actually supposed to be enabled. I originally had it disabled, but it's supposed to be enabled, so that allows the zombies to break the doors. And this, this sets the daylight cycle false. This is a new command, so it's a little iffy right now. Um, so I don't know how I feel about it. But what that means is the sun won't move. So whatever time you have it set to uh, will stay whatever it is. But I'm not sure how I feel about this. Because right now it's, it's about midnight. And I kind of like this look. But if you'll notice, if you put it on daytime, it almost looks a little better. Because it looks like fog. As you can see, like when you're inside, if you look out the doors and stuff, it almost looks more like fog. So this is kind of a preference thing. Um, 
But right now I leave it on midnight. Uh, like this. But uh, if you want to keep it at nighttime, and since the daylight cycle thing is a little iffy right now, you, you can have a daylight sensor like this. And once this, this allows, if it does become daytime, it's going to trigger this daylight sensor, which will turn the command block to set it to midnight. So that'll make sure every time it turns to day, it automatically goes right back to night. Uh, but, see, yeah, you can see it says it's in midnight. But yeah, that's that. And then there's a bunch of aesthetic stuff over here. Now, the command, if you notice, there's a lot of commands that start when you start the game. And so you can disable these. They'll still go into effect, but you won't be able to see it. So now I won't say anything. Now this is old. This is when I used to have it on a timer. So when you press that, it would send in the levers automatically. Um, and you can all, you can link that up if you want. Instead of having the test for command, you can just make it where you can choose when to give the lever to them. But it doesn't really matter. And then this is some aesthetic stuff like uh, creepy sounds from the music disc, which is which is actually pretty fitting for zombies. And then um, you can choose how you want the weather. You can have thunder, which is cool. Makes it look pretty nice and creepy. It's really fitting. But I want it clear. And yeah, as you can see, these are all linked up. These are uh, these were before I had the button trigger them at the start. So uh, you could give them doors, arrows, and bows manually. But now I'm going to show you how it actually is linked together. So once you hit the button, it's going to trigger all these, obviously. And this is going to go down, and this triggers the first round of zombies. This right here, this goes down here, and this is the first one. It links all the zombies together. So it comes out over here, and this this is the first room. This is linked to each dispenser. Like, uh, here's one, and then down there has the ones on the other end, and it is a bit of a maze down here. But yeah, each dispenser is linked to that, and so you can automatically do that by doing the first room, but this will automatically send it. And this also starts the clock for the test four. Uh, so this goes down here, and it comes up here, and it starts this clock, which has already been started. But this starts the clock, which keeps testing this. It keeps checking to see if I have six kills. And once I actually do, it turns on the comparator and dispenses it. Uh, the levers. So, uh, that is a mouthful, but that is the basic gist of the command center. And that's... It's pretty important right now until I actually get the, uh, the rounds to be automated. Now, using that test for command, once you get pretty good with that, that has uh, pretty, uh, pretty much everything you need right there. You can also make it play the sound that I do every time the round starts and and uh, get the set amount of zombies. But, yeah, that's, that's a lot. I um, think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I will put the download link in the description, hopefully, if I figure out how to do that. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go through one more round and... That's pretty much it. Here we go. Round one. Oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned these are where the weapons are supposed to be. Um, like if you play the actual zombies on Nocturne and Toten, that's where the weapons are. Oh, I should probably close that. Why am I lagging? No, stop lagging. Who's breaking in? Who's bro oh, it's the first one. Dang it! Why stop lagging? One kill. Man. No. I'm not sure how I'm gonna incorporate other weapons. I know I have the flint and steel and sword and axe and stuff like that in the mystery box. But as far as like the other guns go that are actually wall mounted where the uh, where the item frames are, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put anything there. But you see I got I got six kills so it triggered the dispenser. So they just dispensed. But now I have to wait for uh, cobweb. I wonder if I can just jump up. I got one. There we go. Got the I don't even have to wait for it. Um and there's the second one. Yep, 
that's pretty much it. And the second room dispensers, I'm not sure if I've shown them. They're uh, they're pretty much in the same spot. I have them all pretty close to the building, so the zombies will get going. That way, once it heats up and somebody's doing it automatically, the zombies will just keep coming rapid fire right at the doors. Um, but, I mean, this is up. If I put the download link, you can do whatever you want with this. If you want, it to, uh, want them to come from the distance, you can always do that. Or with the new zombie horde feature that they implemented, where if you hit, a, hit another zombie, there's a chance other zombies will spawn nearby. You could technically just have one and then get them to just spawn naturally and, uh, and spawn like crazy. But it's all up to you. Um, and like I said, this is not finished. This is just what I've done. And I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to keep working on it and hopefully make it pretty cool. Hopefully. But yeah, I hope you guys like this. This is Nazi Zombies on Nocturne Toten. I think that's how it's pronounced. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and or issues, or suggestions, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments or PM me or something. I know I haven't made a video in forever, so most of you guys probably forgot about me. But if you're seeing this and you like it, yeah, go ahead and tell me. So, I uh, hope you guys liked it.